Okay, let me show you uh, the contents of this video which I am going to cover. Uh, first, I will explain uh, what is the content-based image retrieval, CBIR. Then I will explain the CLD, that is a color layout descriptor, and the EHD, that is the edge histogram descriptor. Both are of MPEG-7 family uh, as feature vectors. And then I will uh, explain the use of wavelets for feature extraction. Then I will talk about the image databases which we have used uh, in this uh, uh, video for image retrieval. And then I will explain the complete training and testing procedure for implementation of CBIR. And then we will talk about some performance parameters uh, which are used to evaluate the performance of a CBIR system. And in the last, I will explain the MATLAB code for complete CBIR system implementation. And uh, before going ahead, I request you to watch following my two videos. Uh, the one video is about the color layout descriptor CLD of MPEG-7 for image retrieval. This video you can uh, find on link given in the description. Uh, in this video, I have implemented this function find CLD. So when you pass your image as input to this function, uh, you get your CLD vector as output. So uh, if you want the code of this function, you have to go through this video. Uh, because uh, I am directly using this function in the implementation of the CBIR in this current video. And the second video is about the edge histogram descriptor and uh, the link which you can find in the description. And here I have implemented uh, this function find EHD. So if you pass your image to this function, uh, you will get EHD vector as the output. GetWins is uh, the supportive function which is uh, used by this find ESD function. So to get the code of these uh, two functions, you have to go through this video. And uh, I will use this function directly in this current video. So now let us go through the theoretical background. So the content-based image retrieval uh, is the CBIR. It is also known as the QBIC. I mean the query by the image content. So it refers to a process of retrieving expected images from the large image databases according to the contents of query image. And this contents mainly refer to the color, texture or the shape features of the query image, which can be automatically extracted from the images using various feature extraction techniques. The CBIR is different than the traditional search which is based on the metadata such as the keywords, text, or uh, some descriptions associated with these images. Uh, the keywords also limit the scope of the queries because of the set of some predefined or predetermined criteria, uh, while the CBIR is flexible in the nature because it depends on the contents of the image and it has no predefined criteria, so it is more flexible. Okay, this uh, block diagram shows the overall implementation of the CBIR system. So here we have the image database, uh, which includes uh, hundreds, thousands or millions of images. These images are uh, converted to a feature vector by some feature extraction algorithm. So this feature extraction algorithm extracts some features of these uh, image contents. And after extracting the features, uh, all the features in the form of a feature vector, FV, uh, they all are stored in a feature database, okay? Now, if we have a query image, then the same features are extracted from the same feature extraction algorithm and we get the corresponding uh, feature vector, FVQ, let's say. So now this uh, uh, FVQ is compared with the feature vectors which are previously stored in the database uh, on the basis of the similarity. And the similarity is obtained uh, by finding some distances, let's say L1 distance or L2 distance between FV and FVQ. And on the basis of the minimum distances, uh, we retrieve the maximum matching images as the output images. So this is overall uh, implementation of the CBIR. And now let us see uh, what is the CLD uh, and how it can be used as a feature vector. So this CLD I have completely explained in my previous video, which I have just uh, explained uh, in my uh, uh, starting slides. 
uh, well, color is perhaps the most expressive of all the visual features and has been extensively studied in the image retrieval research. The color layout descriptor CLD is designed to capture the spatial distribution of the dominant colors in an image and the length of the feature vector is 192. For CLD computation, the image is expressed in YCBCR color space and the discrete cosine transform, I mean the DCT is used to compute the CLD coefficients. The CLD is very compact descriptor, therefore it fits perfectly for the fast browsing and search and uh, one good thing is that it is also the resolution invariant and this is how it looks like. So a CLD which has the size 192, it carries the DCT coefficients uh, of uh, uh, the Y plane or uh, the CB plane and the CR plane. Okay. So this 192 vector uh, gives the information about the spatial distribution of the dominant color in an image. The next is the EHDS feature vector that is the edge histogram descriptor. So like color, texture is also a powerful low level descriptor for image search and retrieval applications. So to capture texture features, the MPEG-7 provides uh, the EHD and the length of the ESD is the 80. If the global win is also included, then it becomes of size 85. So the EHD actually captures the spatial distribution of the edges, which is uh, similar to the uh, CLD, where CLD is capturing the uh, spatial distribution of the dominant colors. Here we are capturing the spatial distribution of the edges in an image. So EHD captures actually the edges that are broadly grouped into the five categories. I mean edges with a, a vertical orientations, horizontal orientations, uh, diagonal at 45 degree, diagonal at 135 degree and isotropic, I mean the non-orientation specific edges. And this is how uh, this ESD vector looks like. Uh, it has uh, uh, various bins from 1 to 16, each is of size uh, 5. And uh, this 5 actually uh, uh, is uh, five types of uh, edge orientations as I said the vertical, horizontal, diagonal 45, diagonal 135 and isotropic. And one global bin is also attached. It is also a five point bin. So obviously the total 17 bin each of five therefore its size is 85. So the detail I have already explained in my previous video. Uh, the link is given uh, in the description so you can refer that. Now let us go through the wavelets uh, which are used for this proposed CBIR and let us see how the wavelets are useful for a CBIR system. Actually the discrete wavelet transform DWT is very effective tool which is widely used for feature extraction. The DWT is capable of extracting uh, the horizontal, vertical and the diagonal details, I mean edges from an image at the different resolution levels. The DWT based feature extraction is quite robust which performs well even in the presence of noise. So that makes uh, DWT as a very useful tool for CBI system. In the last, uh, I will also show you the robustness of the proposed uh, CBI system. So in the CBIR uh, uh, proposed, this proposed system, uh, the wavelets are used for the two different objectives. What are those? Uh, the one is for color feature vector. Uh, the CLD is uh, used for color feature extraction as I said, which gives us the 192 point feature vector. So here the 192 is slightly large. Uh, so to reduce its size, we take a one level wavelet decomposition of this and we consider only the approximation coefficients uh, of the CLD. So its size reduces to half. So it reduces to 96 instead of 192. And uh, as second objective, we use two level wavelet decomposition for capturing the dominant edges in horizontal, vertical and diagonal orientations and also to make the feature extractions noise immune. So this is how the wavelets are used for the proposed CVI system. One for reducing the length of uh, CLD vector and in second uh, they are used primarily for capturing the texture details of an image. 
And now uh, let's have a look on the image databases which we have used uh, in this uh, current CBIR system. The very first is the Wang database which is very popular and you can find uh, uh, the many research papers are based on the Wang image database. So it carries the thousand images of 10 categories. These are the uh, tribal beaches, buildings, buses, dinosaurs, elephants, roses, horses, mountains and food. And uh, we have the equal distributions of images. I mean the 100 images per category. And the size of image uh, is 384 by 256. And this is the link from where you can download this uh, uh, image database. This link is given in the description also. So you can click uh, this link. And the second uh, database is the Microsoft image database. So it carries the 4,323 images of 18 categories. And the size of images are 640 by 480. And this is the link which you can click uh, in the description. And uh, here, just to reduce the size of the database uh, so that the uh, training time becomes uh, low, uh, I have used only uh, just uh, around 50% of images in this database that is 2443 out of this 4323 and instead of 18 categories I have just chosen 10 categories and these are your aeroplanes, cows, sheep, cars, chimneys, clouds, doors, cutlery, trees and windows. So here are a few example images you can see and now let's go for uh, the training procedure, how we can uh, train our algorithm, that means how we can extract the features of the images and how we can uh, store all the feature vectors in a feature database. So this is the scheme. So we have total n number of uh, uh, images in our databases uh, of size let's say m by n and we extract the features from these images and uh, we get a feature vector so in our case uh, we are getting a feature vector of length 181 and then we store all the feature vectors in a database so for example you can see that f1 is the feature vector or features of uh, image 1 this is the feature vector of the image 2 and this fvn is a feature vector of the nth image and let's see how we uh, extract the features from the images so this is the overall procedure of extracting features. Uh, here, uh, this is uh, my input image of size m by n. So it goes to the CLD. So here you can see that this left part is uh, explaining the color feature extraction, while this right part is explaining the texture feature extraction. So let me first explain this color feature extraction. So for color feature extraction, I use CLD. Uh, that is the uh, color layout descriptor of MBAC7. So for that I achieve a 192 length feature vector. So as I said to reduce its size I take the one level discrete wavelet transform. So I get uh, the detail coefficients and approximation coefficients at level 1 and each is of size 96 96. It is just half of the input vector and uh, I'm not considering uh, this uh, CD uh, that is the detail coefficient because uh, it's a high frequency uh, noise type of signal so that is representing a very fast changes in colors. Uh, here CA1 I mean the approximation coefficient uh, coefficients are selected uh, as feature vector so the length of my feature color feature vector is only the 96. And this approximation coefficients actually the preserving uh, uh, the shape of the uh, input 192 length CLD vector. And in the right side we can see the texture feature extraction. So first input image is decomposed into the two level wavelet uh, coefficients. So at the two level decomposition I get four matrices CA2 that is uh, your approximation coefficients at level 2 and uh, CS2 that is the uh, horizontal uh, coefficients, wavelet coefficients at level 2 and CV2 that is the vertical uh, coefficients at level 2 and CD means diagonal detail coefficients at level 2 and I arrange these coefficients uh, 
uh, side by side to form another matrix, let's say F. So this is my uh, matrix F, uh, which of course uh, will be of the half size of the input image, okay, because of the second level uh, uh, decomposition. Now I take the EHD of uh, these uh, wavelet coefficient matrix F, uh, which also uh, highlights uh, all dominant edges, as I said, because EHD captures the image uh, edge orientations in horizontal vertical at 45 at 135 and isotropic types of edges and uh, after applying the ESD I get a feature vector of length 85. So this is my feature vector which is describing the texture detail of the image. So FVC is the color feature vector and FVT is the texture feature vector. So now these two feature vectors are combined together to get a 181 length feature vector. So overall feature vector FV is simply a combination of FVC and FVT. Okay, so that's why the length of the feature extraction is 181. So that is uh, very small in size. So it can support a quick search because of this small length. And the wavelet used for decomposition for uh, both uh, uh, extractions, both types of extractions, I mean for color as well as for textures, uh, the same wavelet is used that is a Simlet 4. So this is the overall training procedure. Now go through the testing procedure. So how we can uh, uh, retrieve the relevant images for a query image. So this is the overall procedure. So this is my uh, query image. Uh, of size m by n and it goes to the feature extraction. So where I extract the color feature as well as texture feature. So inside this box, same feature extraction uh, is there which I have just explained in the previous slide. So you get a feature vector of uh, length 181. So this is a feature vector of the query image FVQ. And uh, this feature vector of the query image is compared with all the feature vectors which are stored in the database. So here you can see that this is a feature vector of the first image. Uh, this is of second, third and so on. And this is a feature vector of nth image. So this uh, uh, similarity match is performed uh, between the query image feature vector and the previously stored feature vectors. So that similarity match is done on the basis of finding uh, the distances between FVQ and FVI such as uh, let's say we find the L1 distance or L2 distance. So on the basis of the minimum distance we sort the result and we get the N nearest matches. So these are your uh, N number of images I mean the capital N number of images uh, which have the least distance uh, with FVQ. So this is your first image, second image, third image and so on and the nth image. So these are your retrieve images. So this is a simple procedure so by which you can test the implemented CBR whether it is working correctly or not. Now let's go through the performance uh, parameters for CBIR which are generally used to evaluate uh, uh, the CBIR system. Uh, actually the very uh, popular one are the two performance parameters one is a precision and other is a recall. They are widely used. Uh, to evaluate the performance of a CBIR system and they are defined as so this is the precision and this is the recall and uh, uh, this is the explanation of various variables used so n naught n naught is actually your number of uh, relevant images that are retrieved and nr is the number of the total images requested it means suppose you request uh, uh, 10 images to be displayed for a query image and if you achieve let's say total 8 images which are relevant to your query images then the precision will be the 80 percent okay and here uh, again n naught is uh, your number of relevant images retrieved and the nd is the total number of relevant images in a database so here i have requested uh, let's say only the 10 images and suppose there are total 100 images of the same category in a database that's the limit and if you uh, recall all the 100 images then check how many are relevant to 
uh, your uh, query image. So let's say if it comes to let's say 93 images are relevant to the query images, then the recall rate will be only the 93%. So this is quite uh, simple to implement. And as I said, both are represented in terms of percentage. And of course, the large value of both will represent a good performance of a CBIR system. And there are a few more performance parameters which are also used. For example, the ANMRR is the second mostly used uh, performance parameters that is known as the average normalized modified retrieval rank. So this was introduced by the MPEG-7 and uh, this metric actually considers the number and the rank of the relevant uh, items that appear in the top images retrieved. Actually it gives the uh, rank to the output also. For example, if you retrieve let's say 10 images and you get a total 8 relevant images, it gives the ranking parameter also. For example, so out of uh, eight images, how many are actually appearing uh, in the top side? I mean the first uh, or top eight matches or how many are actually lying uh, in the middle or how many are lying in the last. So it gives the marks or rank to the images which are appearing in the retrieval result. So it is working on the, uh, the number as well as the rank of the relevant images. So this measure actually overcomes a problem related to the queries with varying ground truth set sizes. So the ANMRR actually ranges in the value uh, from 0 to 1. So with the lower values indicating the better retrieval performance. So there are few more such as MAP which is the mean average precision. Uh, other one is the EQC that is the equivalent query cost. One more that is the average rank of relevant images error rate and MNRO that is a mean normalized retrieval order etc. There are many others also. So these are few uh, parameters which are in practice. Uh, actually the precision and recall are widely used and the ANMRR is also used for many uh, CBR system evaluations. And now let us go through the MATLAB implementation. So before coming to the code, we have to do some preparation. First, we need to download all the images from the database. For example, if you are working with a Wang database, first go to the uh, web page. From there, you download all the 1000 images and store all the 1000 images in a folder. Let's say Wang. As shown here, you can give any name to your folder and then uh, inside the folder you will see all of the images like this and one thing you have to do is uh, you have to rename the images like this I mean the 1.jpg, 2.jpg, 3.jpg and so on till 1000.jpg using some batch processing. So this batch processing you can do with some software such as the Irfan view uh, which is a very uh, a small software available free on the internet you can do that batch processing very easily so you have to name all the images from 1.jpg to 1000.jpg in this folder before uh, running my code okay and next thing you have to do is you have to create these five matlab files and you have to place these five matlab files inside the same folder i'm repeating you have to place all these files inside this same folder otherwise my code will not work uh, if you want to place them outside then you have to do the necessary changes in the code okay so we have the five uh, uh, MATLAB files let me explain what are these so this first one is the find CLD which I have already uh, explained in my introductory slides where I said that this is related to uh, finding the CLD I mean the color layout descriptor of your uh, input image and the code of this uh, file I have not explained in this current video. As I said for the code you have to refer my previous video of CLD. Okay. And uh, then these two files find ESD and get wins. The, 
these two files are related to the finding ESD vector of an image. So again, I have not given the code of uh, these two files in the current video. For the code of these two files, you have to go to my previous videos of EHT. The links I have already given in the description. And now in this current video, I will explain the code of only these two files. So one is the training and one is for testing. So I will explain the codes of only these two files. Uh, so let us go through uh, what is inside these two files. Okay. So this is my first file. That is a wangtrain.m. So this is actually the training. I mean, uh, extracting of all the feature vectors of all the thousand images in the Wang's database. So first, uh, we are uh, declaring the number of training images. That is thousand. And uh, this is the length of the feature vector that is 181. I have already described that how we have achieved 181. And this is we are initializing the features database. So its size is n by uh, FVL that means uh, 1000 by 181. So it's your database which has 1000 uh, locations and uh, 181 length of each location. So, I mean 1000 rows and 181 columns. So which will uh, actually store all the feature vectors so the first space will be occupied occupied by the feature vector one then feature vector two and so on and the last one will be occupied by feature vector thousand for all thousand images and the dwt mode i am using periodization and now i am uh, initializing a for loop so what i will do i will pick one image at a time and then I will extract its color feature, texture features. I will combine these two features to get a uh, feature vector. And then I will store that feature vector vectors into these memory locations. That's it. So here I am reading my image uh, that will go into the variable i. And then I am passing this color image i into the function find cld. So it will compute the cld vector which is of 192 length. As I said, and then now I am normalizing this into uh, in, in, in the magnitude uh, from 0 to 1. And then I am taking uh, the discrete wavelet transform, one level discrete wavelet transform of this vector CLD with the wavelet SIM4. And uh, we achieve the uh, approximation coefficients and detail coefficients. Since detail coefficients we are not using, that's why I have put this sign and uh, these approximation coefficients i will assign to this color feature vector let's say culfv so its size of course will be just half that is 96. and uh, here uh, we are extracting the texture features so the first image uh, the color image is converted into the grayscale and uh, we decompose uh, into the wavelet coefficients at level 2 with the simlet 4. so we get all the coefficients in the c and from that C, I am extracting the approximation coefficients at level 2. And I am extracting all the detail coefficients. I mean horizontal, vertical and detail uh, at the level 2. And now I am forming the matrix F uh, as I have already explained. So what is this matrix F? So this matrix is uh, actually made by uh, combining these uh, coefficient matrix and placing them side by side like this. So this is your CA matrix. Uh, this is CH, this is CV and this is CD. So these matrices are placed like this to form this matrix F. So now this F matrix is passed to the find EHD function. And this find EHD function is extracting the EHD vector whose length is 85. And then I am normalizing its magnitude in the range 0 to 1. And uh, now this uh, texture feature vector tax FV and the previously calculated color feature vectors are combined together to achieve the overall feature vector whose length is 181. I mean 85 plus 96, that is 181. And all these uh, uh, are stored in this uh, uh, feature vector, in this uh, feature database acts one by one in each memory location. So this is a simple overall process of training. So now let me jump to the testing. But before testing, uh, one thing you need to uh, do uh, that after execution uh, 
of this program when execution is complete you get, you will get uh, all the variables uh, in the workspace you can delete all the workspace variables uh, except this x you just preserve this x and then save uh, the file or save this variable as a dot mat file for example let's say xdb dot mat in the same directory so this is required because uh, the this uh, feature extraction or the training is a time consuming process because you are treating the thousand images so when you run this program it will take lots of time so to test the program you don't need to run this program again and again because you are time consuming so uh, in the testing I need only this x variable so I have uh, stored this x variable so when I run the test program I will simply load this uh, x variable or feature database uh, first before running the test program so you have to do this now let me jump to the matlab code for implementing this test file wing test.m so what you need to do before running this program you need to load this x variable as i just explained so you need to load this feature database x by opening this xdb.mat file so once this is loaded, your X variable will appear in the workspace. Now you can run this code. Okay. So first is the CLC of, uh, just by clearing the workspace and uh, defining the number of uh, train images. And with these lines, I'm reading my query image. So this I is my query image and the DWT mode is the periodization. And here I am extracting the color feature of this query image. So this code is the same, which I have just explained in case of uh, training so nothing is new here and here I am extracting the texture features again the code is exactly same which I have just explained in training okay so this is my overall feature vector which combines the color feature as well as the texture texture features and its length is 181 so now I have computed the feature uh, feature vector of this query image and now I will compare this feature vector with all the feature vectors which are already stored in that feature database variable x so for that I first initialize an array that will store the distances which I will compute so its length is a uh, thousand by one and with this for loop I will compare this uh, uh, feature vector with all the feature vectors which are previously stored so here I am finding simply the L1 distance you can see it is Sigma absolute X minus FV okay so I store all the distances in this uh, array and then I am sorting this array sorting in ascending order so obviously at the first place I will get uh, the distance which is the minimum okay and I will get its corresponding index so when I get the index, I can uh, with help of with these index, uh, I can uh, call or read the images uh, from the database. So so index one will be my first match. Index two will be my second match, third match, fourth, fifth and sixth match like this. Actually, uh, what I'm doing here, I'm uh, picking any one image from the database and then I'm retrieving its uh, nearest matches since I'm picking the image from the database itself which is also a part of the training obviously there is no need to uh, 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 display this image one because this image one will be the image query image itself because it is finding di finding distance from itself so uh, the first distance of course uh, first L1 distance will be the zero so this is your image itself so i am uh, displaying the images from second so that will be your first match this will be your second match third fourth and fifth match so here i am uh, displaying all uh, the uh, nearest fifth matches so i have retrieved only the five nearest matches in this case so this is your query image this is your first match and this is the second match third match fourth match and then fifth match so uh, in the uh, display you will see uh, at the top left corner your query image and then the f five nearest matches so now let me run the program and uh, let's see how this program will run and what type of output I will achieve so for that let me jump to the MATLAB so this is my uh, editor 
and this program training program is already written there okay so let me run this program and uh, but before that let me show you the workspace so nothing is uh, here so let me run this program run so it has started and in the workspace you can see that matlab is busy since uh, we are extracting the ima uh, feature vectors of thousand images so obviously it will take some time so we have to wait for that okay so this program uh, is executed and compilation is done so here you can see that all the variables are appearing uh, here in the workspace so uh, in the last this is the variable x which is your feature database and it is carrying all the thousands uh, feature vectors of length 181 so you can remove all the variables and only you can store this x variable as uh, uh, dot mat file so you can press this button let's say save workspace and here you can give the name let, let's say xdb anything any name you can give here and you can save it so later you can recall so for that uh, you don't need to run this training again and again because it's a time consuming okay so now let me run the testing program so this is the test program and i will simply run it so it asked me to choose uh, my query image so let me select uh, image from each category so from the first category of tribals i am selecting this image 8 let's say this image 8 and this is the output you can see so this is your query image and this is the first nearest match you can see the similarity the face is matching it's the same person okay and this is the second match this is the third nearest match fourth match and fifth match so i'm getting all the images from the same category so what is the precision so obviously i have retrieved the five images and out of these five i'm getting all of the same category so my precision is 100 percent okay so now let me run this program again and choose the uh, uh, next query image of different categories so let me select uh, this image number 147 uh, from beaches category and uh, this is the output so here you can see that this is a query image this is second third fourth and fifth match so you can see again for this beach query image i'm getting all the images of beaches i mean of the same category so again my precision is 100 percent so let me select one more from the different category so let, i'm selecting uh, this image let's say 253 from the buildings and uh, this is the output okay so this is my query image and i'm getting all the five matches of the same category so again the precision is 100 okay it will lower down if you increase the requested image if you increase uh, let's say 10 image or 20 image definitely there will be some irrelevant images also and now let me select one more from the different category uh, uh, that is uh, from the bus so i'm selecting this 377 and let me say what is the output so this is the output so this is my image uh, red and i'm getting all the red colors so my cld uh, is working fine and ehd is also working fine so the precision is again 100 percent now let me choose another uh, image of another family uh, let's say uh, uh, the category of the dinosaur so i am i am selecting this uh, image 401 and this is the output so this is my query image and these are five nearest matches so again the precision is 100 percent let me choose another image of different uh, family uh, let's say i am i'm choosing this elephant of 524 and uh, this is my output so this is my input and i'm getting all the elephants images so again the output is impressive and then i am selecting image from another category uh, that means uh, flowers let's say image number 601 which is a yellow rose and this is the output okay so this is a query image and i'm getting all yellow flowers so this is working well and now let me choose another from the different category let's say image to of horse so i'm selecting this image 769 of uh, horse and this is the output you can say so here you can see one good uh, output uh, that i have one brown horse and one white horse 
and you can see that uh, in all relevant images expert this I am getting the same combinations so that is quite impressive one brown and one white horse okay and uh, now let me choose another member just to remain uh, of the category the mountain so I am choosing this uh, 807 image and uh, this is the output so this is my query image of the mountain and i am getting all the images of the same family i mean mountain and the last one is remaining of the food so let me choose one image from the food so let me choose image number let's say 931 so this is the output so this is a query image and these are the nearest matches so you can see that all are of the same category so here I am getting the five uh, images of the same family. So the precision is 100%. Okay, so now I can uh, show such results to the Microsoft database also. So uh, since uh, it carries the large size images and, uh, and, and the number of images are 2443, so it will take more time than the Wang's database. So I have already... Uh, uh, train this program i have already run this program so i am not running here i will simply uh, load uh, the saved mat files in this case okay so it will save my time so i am just uh, opening the dot mat file which i have already stored so this is my uh, database file so all variables are here the same variables you will also achieve uh, when your execution of the training file is finished okay so now i can run the uh, testing file so i can choose uh, my input image so let me choose this uh, aeroplane uh, and let me see what output i will achieve okay so this is the output so this is first one top left is the query image and these are five retreat, retrieved images here i am using the montage command of matlab uh, to show this uh, type of uh, image representation and let me choose a few more let's say image uh, of a cow this brown brown color cow so this is the output so this is my query image and these are the retrieved images all are the brown cows i am getting and now let me select the sheep uh, that is let's say uh, uh, this image 212 and uh, this is the output so this is my query image and these all are sheep which are retrieved and then uh, one more image from another category let's say uh, this uh, from the car image 346 and this is the output so i'm getting all the red cars of the similar type so this is a query image these are retrieved images and uh, choose one more from the different categories let's say uh, uh, from the sky let me choose image number 921 and this is the output so this is my query image and these all are retrieved images and uh, another image and uh, this is of door so i am choosing uh, image number uh, let's say 1362 uh, so this one this one I'm choosing 1362 and let's see what output I will achieve okay so this is my query image and these all are my retrieve image so they all are similar very much similar and one more uh, 1498 let's say image number 1498 this is the spoon and uh, this is the output so i'm getting all the spoons okay of the same color and texture and now i can choose image number 1644 so this is a image of a tree and let me what output i will achieve and yes i achieve all the trees from the database so again precision is 100 percent and in the last i will choose one image of a uh, window okay so I'm choosing the image number 1828 and uh, this is my output, okay? So the input is this and these all are retrieved images. So this is how my uh, proposed uh, CBR system is working. And you can see that 
uh, till now I got 100% precision just for five retrieve images. Of course, it is not, it will not be 100 for more retrieval images. Few images will be irrelevant. That is quite natural, but it is performing well right now. Now let me show you uh, the robustness of this uh, proposed algorithm. Okay, so uh, and that will uh, give an idea that how the wavelets are uh, working and how and why they are so impressive. So uh, to judge the robustness of this scheme, uh, what I will do now, I will uh, actually instead of giving the original image, I will give the different distorted versions of this image. I mean, I will crop it and it will uh, I will give this cropped image as the input. I will put few cuts like this and then I will uh, use this image as the input. I will uh, enlarge this in, in size. I will uh, simply compress in the size and I will add some Gaussian noise and uh, I will add some salt and pepper noise. I will pixelize it and I will do a oil painting of the image. And uh, with this much of distortion, we will see whether my uh, uh, algorithm is able to uh, recognize uh, or retrieve the related images or not. So let me show you these distorted images uh, uh, by zoom so you can have an idea. So for example, this is your image with the Gaussian noise. So here you can see uh, uh, that these clouds, etc. these are not clear. There is, they, they are under effect of the Gaussian noise. And this is your salt and paper corrupted noise. So here you can see a few uh, black dots and white dots of salt and paper noise. And this image is pixelized. You can see it is heavily distorted. And this image uh, is oil painted. So again, this is heavily distorted. Okay. So I will give these images one by one and we will see that uh, whether my proposed CBR is able to retrieve the relevant images or not. So let me jump to the MATLAB and uh, uh, let me open my uh, Wang database actually. So for that I need to uh, load that uh, file okay which I have already stored I mean the X variable file. So I will simply open and uh, go to the Wang database and uh, I will load that database. So my database is loaded. So that's why I was telling that uh, if you do this, if you save all these variables or simply only this X variables, there is no need to run those training time consuming programs again and again. Okay. So now uh, let me run this test program and uh, it asked me to choose my file. So I will give uh, this uh, cropped image first. Okay. So this is my original image 314. Uh, here I will give its cropped version. You can see it is cropped in the middle. So this is my output. You can see for this cropping also it is working fine. I am retrieving all the relevant images. Let me give another input. And here I am giving this uh, input image which is corrupted by this cross, white cross. And uh, this is my input and here I am getting this output. And here you can see that I'm getting some white colors also, uh, which is influenced by this uh, central white marks. And let me give another distorted image. And this is uh, the enlarge. I mean, this uh, image is uh, zoomed. Uh, it is of generally of the uh, double of the size of the input image. And here this is query image and I'm getting all these retrieve images. And now I will give the uh, the small size of this image it is just 50 percent uh, 50 percent reduce I can show it in the current directory so this is my enlarged one sorry uh, this is my enlarged image you can see and this is my uh, uh, reduced size image this is very small just half in the size so with this uh, half size image let me see what output I will achieve okay it's still I'm getting the good results so with this uh, half small size uh, tiny image, I'm getting the full result. Now let me give another input. Uh, this is uh, the oil painted image. Okay. And this is the output. So here you can see that query image is very uh, corrupted by the oil painting. And these all are relevant images. 
and then I will select the pixelized image which is uh, also heavily corrupted so this is your query image which is quite corrupted and still I'm getting the relevant images so this is actually uh, possible because of uh, uh, the wavelets uh, if you directly apply the ESD on such type of a distorted image of course your edge details will be changed quite so here it is uh, playing uh, here wavelets are playing good and let me choose one another uh, which is uh, corrupted by the salt and pepper noise and uh, this is my output okay and I have taken one more image uh, from the internet which is not the part of this uh, uh, Wang database this one this uh, bus okay so let me what is the output so this is my query image which is taken from the internet and these are my relevant images okay so this is uh, what I have uh, shown you in this video. So I have shown you a very robust type of uh, CBR system which is implemented with uh, which is uh, extracting the color uh, features with help of the CLD and textual features with help of the wavelets and ESD both. And uh, it is giving a uh, impressive, quite impressive uh, retrieval results. Although I'm not saying that uh, this is a very good implementation, I have just presented uh, a, a framework, you can say. So if you have more ideas, you can change this code, you can implement even more impressive, more powerful and efficient CBIR system. And uh, I would like also to know uh, your implementation if you improve, if you can improve this. Okay, so this is uh, how we can learn from each other. So that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and learned a lot of new things. Okay, so I thank you all for watching uh, this video. I uh, request you to please like it, share it and stay tuned for more such interesting videos to come. So till then, goodbye.